All right, so functional annotation. So we're just, now you're going to add biological information to your variants. Um, OK, why do you want to do this? Well, if you're, if you're working on a, medically, in a medical genetic study, um, for example, with Mendelian diseases, it's very important to know whether mutations affect genes and which ones and how. Are they, you know, is, is, does a mutation occur in a coding region, a gene, or a non-coding region? Does it, is it a synonymous mutation where it probably does not affect the, uh, the efficacy of the gene, or is it non-synonymous where actually it might make a potentially large change? Um, is it a deleterious mutation? So if you are involved in these sorts of genetic studies, functional annotation is critical. Um, I should also just step back and give you a, a warning here that there are, there's, people are very passionate about, about functional annotation, and our group is not passionate. We actually had tried to, do, get to jump into this world at one point and gave up. It's so, uh, it's so intense that you'll see we kind of outsource part of this to, uh, to other external tools. Um, I'm mentioning it here just so you know it's out there and you know what we do, but even, even when we provide functional annotation, there are a lot of groups at the Broad who decide to re-annotate functionally because they have their own uh, personal tool they prefer. So what I'm going to show you now is just what we do, but it's realize that it's one of many possibilities. OK. So what we do is we go to SNPF. We chose SNPF because it's fast and easy to use and handles BCFs. Okay. Those are the reasons. Oh, and it was pretty accurate, too. So accurate, fast, handles VCF. The, uh, the guy who creates it is very nice. We present him with bug reports. He responds to us. Winner for, on our end, so that's why we chose SNPF. There are other annotators out there. We chose SNPF, and we handle SNPF. So this is, but it's not in the GTK. You have to understand that. So this will take your, uh, your VCF and add functional annotations, and then use the variant annotator to, to parse the, uh, that information and put it back into your original VCF. That's the flow here. <laughs> Bless you. OK, so for SNPF to work, you need some sort of transcript database. And this is all mentioned on the SNPF site, which I'll discuss in a second, and your original VCF file. Go through SNPF to get this SNPF VCF file, which is very intense and full of lots of data. And then use that and the original back end to the variant annotator to get a nice, clean, annotated VCF file. This is the workflow here. It's actually pretty simple and pretty fast. OK, so what does the first step look like? Um, you have to go get SNPF first. That's important. It's not part of the GTK. You need to deal with the database. You have to download some of his, uh, the files he produces for, again, for human data. He's got other uh, databases for non-human data. You should take a look at the site. Uh, and he's very amenable to adding organisms if they're not already there. Um, OK, and then it's a very simple command line. The only thing you need to know, just like with the physical phasing earlier, you have to run with this, with this option. Okay? If you don't do that, you can get some really weird results, um, which you know, aren't important for this discussion. They're kind of detailed. But we, it, it, unless you really know what you're doing, just run with this option, only coding true, especially with human data sets, and you'll have no problems. Okay? And out of this file, you have this output file here. Uh, sorry, here. It's going to look like this. This is one record. There's a lot of information in there. Okay? And what it does is it gives you the effects associated with every single transcript at that position. And there could potentially be a lot of transcripts, uh, alternate transcripts that overlap a position. And you have a lot of data in here to parse through. Okay? And this is kind of cumbersome, and it's hard to deal with. So some people want all this information if they're going to do their downstream an analyses. It's very important to them. What we do in the JTK is we say, you know what we really want is we kind of want the most egregious one, the, the, the worst one. So we're going to take this and run it through the variant annotator and clean up the data a bit so it's easier to read for, the, for, you know, for human data. Okay? So what we do is we take that file, the original VCF, and get a clean version, which is very easy to create. Again, you just use this SNPF annotation. This dash A is use SNPF. Okay? Your original VCF the SNPF file, and you output a uh, nice clean file. So what it does is it selects only the highest impact effect for each variant. So if you have lots of synonymous mutations, and then a one non-synonymous mutation, it'll choose that one and put all the details into the record for just that one synonymous event, given that transcript. It'll give you the transcript ID for that event. It'll give you um, the, uh, I guess there's a, like a rating system, like how bad is it? Super bad, really bad, a little bit bad, not so bad. Um, 
And it kind of helps you separate things into these broader categories that way. So you're not really lost in all the data. So some people find this very useful. Like I said, some people who are really passionate about what they say, no, you're, you're cleaning up the data too much. We really want all the data. And they're, you know, they know how to hack through things to, to get things to work. Um, OK. And this is a huge caveat. Oh, you know, I should also mention that David Rosen, um, who hasn't spoken yet but has been a TA, did a, almost all of this work on the JTK. And so I really want to give him credit for this. Um, OK, so here's the caveat, though. Certain versions of SNPF work well with the JTK and have been tested with the JTK, and certain ones haven't. Um, and, and you know, we don't have really the time and resources to always be updating and making sure we're kind of current. So if you look at the website, it'll describe exactly which version to download and which one works well, or at least is supported by us. So keep that in mind when you, if and when you run this stuff. Okay, and at that point, you have an annotated ECF file with all the functional information for, the, um, for that particular, for all your sites in the file. Okay, so what is it, so again, we talked about this before, what does the original annotation look like? All right, it's all this data, and this was the most egregious event, right? It happened to have been in a coding region, and you know, it uh, affected the splice site, and so when you look at the new record inside the, the, the uh, annotated VCF using the variant annotator, you only have this much data. Okay, you see exactly what the problem was, the effect was, and I'm um, finding, I'm looking here. Ah, the SNP F impact. Is it a high, it's a high impact. This is a really bad thing. I think there's high, medium, low, moderate, whatever it is. It, these are all mentioned on the website. We can, we can look for more details there. And this is what, this will be added to the info field of the VCF file. And that is um, all we have to say about functional annotation. So again, I, I would say I'm happy to, to answer questions now. Um, the truth is, if you, if you uh, really want to understand more about functional annotation, I might recommend you waiting until Chris gets up here, or find Menachem later, who really you know, are the ones in our group of anyone who deal with this stuff more often. Anything else? Questions? Uh, yes. If SNPF finds more than one um, Tri Tri uh, high uh, Random. So the question was, let's say there are multiple, so multiple transcripts for which the effect is uh, equally bad, equally high. Which one do you choose? And I think you just choose the first one in the file, the first one that SNPF gives us. So it's random, which is, again, another reason why people don't necessarily love you know, the simplification. Anything else? Good question. Yep. All right, so, so let me repeat the question for everyone. Hopefully, I'll get it right. Correct me if I'm wrong. So uh, the question basically was, sometimes, uh, I'm going to summarize it. Sometimes people, uh, it's, you know, it's very misleading to only take the worst effect, potentially, um, and to lose all of that other information. What can users do if they actually need that information and, but still want to deal with SNPF? So one thing I should say is the SNPF output was a VCF file. I'm going to go back and just show you. So SNPF produces a VCF file. It's a valid VCF file. It contains the same variants that went in. Whatever variant went in comes out, the same number of records, uh, theoretically. Um, but it just, it's a lot larger, um, and it's a lot harder to read human-wise and deal with. So, but if you want that information, it's there for you. Just use the SNPF file. We just give you the option of simplifying it and making it easier to handle if you want to. Does that answer your question? Is that right? You don't know the functional uh, significance of all the different transcripts. It's a great question. This is not something that our group deals with, to be honest with you. So I would punt that off to people who downstream who actually, the analysts who, who deal with that. If anyone else wants to answer that question, feel free to jump in. Yeah, I didn't think so. Sorry. <laughs> Anything else before we have Chris come up?